David, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. What is the need for small modular reactors? Well, I think if you look at the history of reactor development, especially what G. Itachi has done, we started with small micro reactors back in the 1950s. And then the evolution grew to larger base load reactors um, to, take, to take on that big power need. And the economics were better. Now the overnight capital of these large reactors is so intrusive for, for a utility or even a country to spend, it's driving towards the smaller reactors, which you can actually combine in smaller chunks to get the base load that you need, but at a less cost. So in terms of application, obviously these are smaller units. Yes. Where would you foresee them being deployed? So the small reactors can go as a replacement for a coal plant. So it's interesting that as the coal plants retire, you have infrastructure there that is suitable for a small reactor to replace. So you've got the transmission lines, buildings, it's already, the, the uh, environmental studies already done, so it's an easy transition. And that's lost a lower cost to do that than to start at a greenfield site. So coal replacements, um, anywhere that you would need uh, that base load of power, you could power, um, companies, industrial companies that do chemicals or manufacturing companies, and, uh, and also mine the, the uh, aluminum smelters, steel mills, that type of thing that need a large, large base load can replace that. There's also a need in certain Nordic countries to replace their district heating, which is right now coal, so they need, they need a replacement for those coal plants. So this is an ideal solution to replace coal plants that drive district heating in some of those countries. So when you say modular, how big are these modules? Uh, how, how big is the reactor? And, and how small and how big can you go with this? Our partners, Hitachi, have done a very good job of understanding how to modularly construct nuclear power plants. And there's a certain rate of return where too many modules don't make too much sense. It gets more costly. So they've dialed in what's the right amount of modules to use? What's the logistics to get components to the site? Is it easier to build the module on site and place it or build it somewhere else and ship it in? So a lot of times you think of a module could be the reactor vessel, but it can also be part of the construction as well. So it all depends on logistically where the plant is sited and in the best way to build these things. And is there a political will for these small modular reactors? There is, and, and, you're, and we're starting to see with the, the, the net zero um, uh, targets that the European countries are starting to put in place, there's a need for replacement of these fossil plants and then the economics of SMRs, the cap, overnight capital cost is low enough where it's, it, it's feasible for a lending institute, private banks, to lend that type of money. So where are they in the development cycle? For us, we have taken our large economic simplified bowling reactor, which is 1,500 megawatts, shrunk it down to 300 megawatts, using all the licensing basis that we put together for that into designing this. And we're pacing ourselves with the market, but we'll be ready to deploy in 2027, 28. If someone were to come today and say, we're ready to go, and put the whole project timeline together, we could be in, in place before 2030 for sure. So it's quite an exciting time. Yeah, very exciting. What's most exciting you about this new development? I just think it, the, what's exciting me is the way we're approaching our design. We're designing for cost. So we talk to the market, we talk to our customers and ask them, where's the cost target we need to be at in order to sell these? And the number was, you need to be under 2,500 US dollars per megawatt. So it's like, all right, we're driving for that. And that's where our cost target is. We wanna be competitive with gas, combined cycle gas plants, as well as other renewables. And that opens up the market for us. So we're not, we're looking at a billion dollars overnight capital, which is easy for a lending institute or a utility or a country, even a country to say a billion dollars versus 10 to 20, it's a big difference. So that's our sweet spot is really designed for cost, taking the cost down to be competitive with those other energy producing. And what, what about test reactors? Don't need a test reactor. I do not. So ours is a boiling water reactor, which we've operated for 50 years. So we have operating experience for the, that actual technology. The real risk in a, a nuclear plant project is project delivery. The technology works, and it's guaranteed, contractually guaranteed, and it has worked for 50 years. It's really delivering the project and executing the project 
as you stated you would in a time frame that you want. So it's just a scaling down of a known technology. So we're using, we innovated to take out cost. What we didn't innovate was on proven supply chain. So our fuel bundles are the same we have deployed in all the boiling water reactors around the world. So it's licensed, it's proven. The reactor vessel materials, the internals are all manufactured right now today. So it's really innovating around that to take cost out. So our construction techniques, our delivery method is, is where we've innovated. So what happens next? So next is to really identify the key markets, key customers, and we're starting to see growth and interest in the US, Canada, uh, the UK obviously since we're here and we've been studying this market for a long time, and also some of the, the Eastern European countries are starting to come alive. We've signed a MOUs with Estonia as well as a industrial company in Poland. So the industrial market base is starting to realize that maybe we can to decarbonize all the energy requirements we need, we can build reactors to power our plants. So that's a brand new market that's starting to come in play. So a lot of things moving. I think in the next six months, there's going to be a lot more positive information out there that so can what, be shared. Watch this space. <laughs> awesome. David, well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.